think Madam's multiple personality disorder might be peeking its head. Dime steps in in the nick of time so that Amp don't get off. And Midnight really ain't sh What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Bain coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another All the Queen's Men video. In this video, we're doing a breakdown from season two, episode number two, currently streaming on BET+. Plus. If you missed it, I did do an episode one breakdown, so be sure to check that out before you watch this video. And make sure that you're all caught up on the series as there will be tons of spoilers. We will be talking about what happened in this episode. Also, go ahead and give me a subscribe as you don't want to miss out on any of the other dope series that I break down right here on Erica Bain TV. I am your good sis E that you love to talk TV with and we're going to depth honey. So hit the subscribe button if you're new here so that you do not miss out on more All the Queen's Men's videos but also me talking about all of the other hot television series happening across streaming and network television. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get into it. Yo, the episode opens with Doc leaving the club and finding Teresa in his car with his baby. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa asks ain't been right since she popped up randomly and now all of a sudden she mysteriously has a black, like a bruised cheek, a messed up lip, choked around her neck. And this is all of like an hour after Doc gives her a call about the, the husband you know, confronting him in the parking lot. Everything about this red wrong. Everything about this red, this hoe is lying. And by the end of the episode, we realize that she literally forces Doc to take her to some random ass convenience store that she dips out the back, leaving her baby in the car. That ain't shifty or weird at all. And then um, after Doc goes to confide in Midnight and have Midnight watch the baby after Midnight was just smashing some random ass lady that he got to throw out his house because that's a, a, a conducive environment to leave your child. Midnight calls because, you know, Doc tells her, tells him about her wanting him to kill her husband immediately. And Midnight is always down for a little bit of cash, which is part of his problem, which is why you can't trust Negroes like him. He calls her like, yo, I'll take care of it for you. Something is off. Why do we have to kill this man tonight? He put his hands on you. Okay, cool. But why do we have no time to think out a full plan? Why do we have no time to like enact any other type of retaliation? Like all of it is giving you are being set up. And bye golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> so many of the women in this series are, are setting these men up for their downfall, whether it is... Um, Teresa with Doc and Midnight or Miss Tandy with Babyface trying to get turn Babyface out with her damn husband. It's like, okay, is, do any of these women not have any type of ill motives? I mean, I guess we could say Madam, but everybody has this ridiculous ass unrelenting loyalty to Madam. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of just intrigued the way that everybody seems to be like, they are going to move mountains. They are never going to cross her. They will never betray her. And if you betray her or come across her, your ass can go. It's, it's just beyond me. The way that blue handles cat at the end of the episode. I mean, we felt it coming, but also like, she really is not playing. Like you threatened madam and now you the duck. But, you know, I think she really did seal her fate when she decided that she was going to try to shoot Blue because she felt in danger. Girl, you ain't love her that much because you was ready to put a hole right in her chest. But before you could actually realize it, she emptied your clip. So all she needed for you to do was to pull that trigger for that click to happen for her to be okay and give herself permission to kill your ass, which is what she did. And I can't blame her because you part of the reason why Amp is in the hospital now. And no, I'm not giving any accountability to uh, Madam. Argue with your mama. Yeah, I don't think I like Kat from the beginning, so it's fine. <laughs> All right, but back to Doc. Doc ain't about this life. He ain't going to become about this life. And he really needs to get out of this life because all of the situations that keep coming to him, it just proves that he doesn't have the stomach for it. Last season, Madam had to kill somebody for him and he's getting all sick, looking all baby face, not like baby face, but looking all baby face in the damn face, all shocked and confused and weirded out. Now you got Teresa trying to get you to kill somebody and you can't handle that either. You can barely handle... 
you can barely handle her. She cussing you out, laying you out all up in your car, trying to make you go to the convenience store and to do this and do, do that. Like, Doc, where's your backbone, baby? Stand up. You so weak in the knees. Stand up. And I'm gonna need these men to get some kind of budget or just some kind of financial counseling or something because y'all make way too much money to continuously be hoeing the way that y'all hoeing. Babyface goes home with Miss Tandy because she wants a little bit of a taste of what happened at that little private party from last season. And he down with it because you know, the money is right. But then they get in there and then he wants an extra thousand dollars cause she like, okay, I wanna have somebody watch. Okay, yeah, your homegirl can watch but it's gonna cost you a little extra money. Oh no, not my home girl it's my husband your what your what ma'am your what yeah her husband he's over there watching for a little bit but he just loving how the stroke is looking so he decides that he wants to join in and he wants to up the ante he goes from two to five to ten thousand dollars if you just let him stick it in or and or you stick it in and it's just like see had you got a budget you wouldn't have found yourself in this predicament right here now you gotta hurry up throw your clothes on because you're uncomfortable and you aren't gay so you're not willing to go that far with it and they're like oh but they want you so now the rich entitled go your life people have set their sights on putting you in a position where you are going to need this money just so that she can be able to have her husband scratch the itch specifically that only baby face can scratch congratulations baby face you played yourself again get a budget financial plan accountant or something Y'all need to figure out how to make these dollars stretch because the way that y'all running around here broke every other goddamn night, but y'all bringing in thousands of dollars shaking that ass makes no sense to me. Maybe y'all need to take a trip to Chuck Elisa to talk to Mercedes. Sis had bands on bands on bands stacked up until her mama stole it. But you know what I'm saying? Y'all are killing me. Now, I'm gonna go back to Madam real quick because while, I uh, can't remember the little servant chef pulled the bullet uh outer name is i'll remember next episode promise y'all he runs a bathroom at him and then is washing her <laughs> and she's like she needs her medicine this is the first time we get a call back to what we saw in season one episode one because the series opens up with madam looking like she's having an episode with multiple personalities and she's like yelling at herself and she's talking to herself and you see all these different versions of her on screen but we don't get any more calls to that the entire season one and i was like dang that was a very interesting beat that i didn't feel like ever presented itself but when she asked specifically for her medicine and you can tell that she's getting a little bit of rattled by all of the things that have happened in this night i'm like okay this season we're probably going to touch on that and we're going to see her maybe have a nervous break or maybe have an episode and it ain't gonna be good because if this is lucid cognitive good madam then madam with multiple personalities madam with another side of her that have hopped out i i, I fear for all of y'all don't cross her and maybe that's how she also elicits this unrelenting loyalty everyone blue dime like all of the men at the at the club like chef like everybody is like riding for madam and will not ever think twice about crossing her and we love to see it but then also it's just like what is really going on now, as I mentioned in my little intro, Don makes it to the hospital because Madam tells her about Aunt being shot. She makes it to the hospital just in time because the damn mama of the daughter that Aunt accidentally killed is happens to be his nurse and she is plotting on his downfall. Moments before Don pops up into that damn room, she's ready to inject something into his IV and that was going to be all she wrote for Aunt. Now, I'm hoping that Don is going to put two and two together. She doesn't in this actual episode but I'm hoping that she's going to recall because I think that Amp last season talked to her about this particular incident and when the when the nurse mama lady decides to run back this emotional ass story about her daughter I was just like please Don put it together put it together that this is exactly who that lady is that he's talking about um so that you can make sure that he's safe ma'am goes through all of what happened damn near breaks down in tears and then has the nerve to give Don some kind of cryptic ass message talking about some yeah enjoy your time with him and i'm sorry for your loss bitch what you sorry for my what you just said that he was stable you just said that he was fine he looked like he about to make a full recovery he just rested run it by me again as she walks out 
Dom, I'm gonna need you to get on a good foot, honey. I know that you, you know, you still reeling from being tossed into that damn wall and whatnot, but I'm gonna need you to get on a good foot because Aunt can't be taken up out of here, especially not by some ornery ass mama who's placing blame in the wrong place. Now, one of the most interesting things in this episode is El Fuego and his damn ex Teresa who follows him home because she wants him to make love to her and she is so sorry she ain't know he was at this club girl you knew whoever you about to marry you was not feeling and you want this man back and this again all of these women are setting these men up for their damn downfall and I hate that for them something about Teresa I think her name is Teresa. Maybe I got it wrong. I'm probably running these damn women's names together. So excuse me, y'all. I'll correct it in the, in the description if I have it wrong. But this little fiery Latina, she's gorgeous. She she feels like trouble. I ain't even gonna hold you. And all she wants is to, to, to have that thing laid on her. And it's just like, girl, if you don't want this man for who he is and for the relationship and to fix what you broke by allowing your family to interject and influence you and to break y'all up, girl, we don't need it. We don't want it and we don't need it take your little cute ass on because he's already barking up a new tree anyway even though danny over at sisters is not trying to give him enough play for me but that's another conversation for another day ultimately el fuego makes the right decision to throw her, throw her ass out and that's because his heart is still involved poor little tink tink it's so hard watching men sometimes who are heartbroken because they they do not handle it well at all and yeah, y'all, that is my breakdown of episode two, season two of All the Queen's Men. If you watched the episode, then drop down in the comment section and let me know what your thoughts are and what are you anticipating for next week as a new episode premieres on BET+. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new here, give me a subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my All the Queen's Men's videos when they're posted, as well as all of the other hot television talk that we have here on the channel daily. It's your good sis, Erica Bay, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.